So water is flowing at a rate of 50 cubic meters per minute from a shallow. My, my picture is not really um, up to scale here, but it's very wide and not as, as tall. According to the dimensions, it's 45 feet for the radius, on, um, in this case, meters for the radius, and only five meters deep. And water is basically flowing out of this container at a rate of 50 cubic meters per minute. In part A, we're going to find how fast the water level is falling at the moment when the water is five meters deep. How fast is, how fast is the water level falling? OK, I'm going to represent the water level in here in blue. So the water level could be any, at any point in this cone. It doesn't have to go all the way to the rim it's, because it's flowing out of the container. It's getting lesser and lesser. So it could be at any level there. We don't know where it is right now. But we do know the outside dimensions. The outside dimensions are the base radius is 45 meters. And the, base, uh, and the height for the entire cone is 6 meters. As you can see, definitely not up to scale here. And further, I will call the depth of the water in this container, I'm going to call that H. And whatever the radius is at that moment for the actual water in the container, I'm going to call that R. The radius of the water in the container, I'm going to call that R. So the outside dimensions are 45 meters for the radius, 6 meters for the height. And for the water that is actually in the container, I'm calling the radius R and the height H. That's changing. As this water flows out of this container, R and H are changing, right? That's why I assign variable names for those. Whereas the outside dimensions are not changing, that's why I'm putting actual constants for those, 45 for the ra radius and H for the height. OK, let's try to write down the first three things, which are really the most important steps, in my opinion. The goal, what's given, and the equation that will relate the variables. The goal, what's given to us, and the equation that will relate the variables with each other. Okay. So let's do part A first. What is the goal in part A? What are we trying to find? Good. I heard from a lot of students said the same thing. I'm happy to hear that. So dH dt. How fast is the water level falling? That's clearly going to be dH dt. At the moment when water is 5 meters deep, so that's at the moment when h equals 5. I'm going to find that. OK, what's given? What is that 50 cubic meters per minute? What is that 50 cubic meters per minute? You know what? The units are very important in telling you what this says. Cubic meters is a unit for what, usually? Volume. Exactly. So this is the change of volume, then. How would you write it as a derivative? dv dt. But is it going to be positive or negative? Every time you write a derivative, think about it before you finish writing it down. In this case, water is flowing out from this container. The volume is decreasing as time goes by, so we should put Plus or minus? Negative, exactly. Minus. If you will see other questions where they're filling in a container with sand or some materials, in that case, it would be an example with a positive dVd. In this case, cubic meters per minute. Again, units are very important in telling us what's exactly given to us. In this case, cubic meters automatically reminds us this should be volume. OK, an equation. An equation that can relate the volume of a cone with the height of a cone. Uh, what equation could we use there? How about the volume equation for a cone? Luckily, you don't have to memorize the volume equation for a cone. I will give this to you for a cone or sphere. You don't have to memorize. I'll give it to you for a cone. Here's the equation. Volume equals 1 third pi r square h.
basically what this equation is telling me is if you took, if you took like a cylinder of, um, the volume of a cylinder would be pi r squared h, right? This is saying like you can squeeze in three, three cones, maybe put one like this and two upside down that way. You can basically, be, it's telling you that the uh, volume for a cone is one third that of a cylinder with the same radius, okay? But you don't have to memorize, okay. We do have a slight problem here, and this is when we're going to refer to the clause in your template. Remember the template I gave you earlier? Um, it said for cone problems only in step number four. What did it say? For cone problems only. Use similar triangle ratios to write the equation in one variable only. Because right now we have an R squared and an H on the right hand side. And if we were to differentiate that equation, we're going to have to use the product rule. It's going to be messy. And even then, we may have to do further fancy things. So to avoid messiness, we're going to try to get rid of one of the variables there. Okay, again, because it's in the product form, we don't want to worry about the product rule and further uh, problems that could come with that. Um, so here is how we're going to get rid of one of the variables. Take a look back to this picture that we have up here. And I'm going to just redraw it like a skeleton of that. Okay, this is the outside dimensions, just a cross section of it. Uh, this side was 6, this side was 45. Again, please excuse the bad uh, scaling there. Looks like 6 is bigger than 45, but it just gives you the general idea. And inside, you have water. Let me use that. So the, for the water, this is the radius, and this is the height, whereas the 6 refers to the outside dimensions of the container for the height. OK, what can we use here to write r in terms of h? What is the relationship between r and h? Any thoughts? We have to use a little bit of geometry here, similar triangles. Does anybody remember that idea? Good. There are several ways to do it. You could say r over 45 equals h over 6. Or you could say the ratio of r over h in the small triangle equals to the same corresponding size in the big triangle, which would be 45 over 6. Either way you go, you're going to be able to continue the problem just fine. So you can use either ratio that you prefer. OK. Now, we want to find the HDT, right? So I want to keep the h in this equation. I need to get rid of the r. I need to know what r is in terms of h. I want to keep the h in there so I can find the hdt in the end, OK? So let's write what r is then. r is 45 over 6 times h, multiplying both sides by h. r is 45 over 6 times h. Could you simplify that for me, that fraction? Divide the top by 3 and the bottom by 3, right? So 15 over 2 h, or 7.5 h, right? So, so we, now we know r in terms of h. We can come back to our equation and plug it in. So volume equals 1 third times pi times r squared. Now, you've got to be careful here. The entire r has to be squared, 15 over 2 h squared. And what else should I have? One thing I'm missing in my equation is what? the last age in there. Let's not forget about that one, right? OK, now I'm going to distribute that squaring. Just basically square each and every number under that parentheses. So we have 1 third pi. OK, if you square the 15, you get 225. If you square the 2, you get 4. If you square the h, you get h squared. But don't forget the h on the outside. And I want to clean it all up a little bit. Let's rewrite our volume equation. Uh, does 3 go into 225? If so, let's simplify it. How can I know? I add the digits of 2, 2, and 5. That's 9. If it's divisible by 3, then the number will be divisible by 3. So go ahead and do 225 over 3. What do you get? 75. So now we have 75 pi over 4. Times what? H cubed. So far, have we done any differentiation? No. All we have done is simplify the volume equation as much as possible. Yes, questions?
Right, and then simplify it. You can also do it that way. You can do 225. Two, two, no, 3 goes into 225 and 3 goes into 12. You can simplify your fraction, okay? Okay, so now that we have our volume equation, we're ready to differentiate it, okay? And we're going to differentiate it with respect to which variable? Always, always with respect to t, right? Differentiate with respect to t because things are changing with time, so we always differentiate with respect to t in this section. So, on the left-hand side, it's going to be derivative of uh, volume with respect to t. That's just dv dt. Okay? On the right-hand side, you have a number times h cubed. Okay? That number remains... What is the derivative of h cubed with respect to t? 3h squared dh dt. Okay, basically think of this as like 3x squared. How do you differentiate 3x squared? The 3 stays there, right, and you differentiate a 2x, and you multiply with that. So it's the same idea. You have a constant times a function. The constant remains, and you're just uh, multiplying it with the derivative of that function next to the number. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, now do we know what h is at the given moment in time? Is it at the moment when h was 5? I'll go right back to it, but I just want to double check. So we are given h. And we're trying to find the h dt. So we are given h, and h is 5. So let's go ahead and plug h equals 5 into this equation. And what else do we know? Do we know dv dt? What was that? Negative 50, right? So let's also put that in there. Negative 50 equals so, um, 75 pi. Actually, I might as well multiply 3 times 75. And it looks like that's going to be 225 pi over 4. For h squared, I'm going to put in, for h, I'll put in 5, so that'll be 25 in there. And then we have the h dt at the end. Okay, how do we solve this equation for the h dt? What should I do first? You could do this in one shot, but if you want to do it in two steps, first multiply both sides by 4, and then divide by the coefficient. That would be the easiest way, I think. So first multiply both sides by 4. So on this side, the 4s cancel. And then in the next step, divide by the coefficient. So dh dt equals negative 200 divided by, so I have 225 pi times 25. Now, if you're going to do it on the calculator, you're going to need another set of parentheses for the denominator. So make sure you do it as such. And let's see what we're getting. Good, negative point zero one one hundred. How about the units? We found the h dt. Uh, the volume was given in terms of cubic, what was it, cubic meters per minute. So this will be then what? Meters per minute. The unit for length will be just meters, and the time is still minutes. So meters per minute. Yes, question? The given was uh, 50 cubic meters, and that represented the rate of change of the volume. That was the given information, right? Yeah, that was cubic meters. I mean, why is it cubic Because the answer we got is for age. Oh, right, right. Mm -hmm. And age represents distance, so units will be the, uh, units for the distance. Okay. Okay, and part B actually is going to be very easy once we have part A in, in hand, so we know what the H over DT is. Part A was asking, rather B is asking, how fast is the radius changing? How fast is the radius changing? 
How would you write that as a derivative? How fast is the radius changing? Do you want to know what the RDT is this time? You might say, wait a minute, do I have to go back and do everything again? No, 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 you don't have to do everything again. There's a very simple way to get dr over dt. Since we know what the h over dt is, give me an equation that relates r and h together. An equation that relates r and h. We had that already up there, didn't we? What was it? Here, right here, we had r equals 15 over 2h, correct? r equals 15 over 2h from our similar triangles. We want to know dr dt right now, so what should we do? We know the h dt, we want to find dr dt, so what should I be doing to this equation? Good, take the derivative with respect to t of both sides. On the left hand side you will have dr over dt. On the right hand side, a constant times a function, the constant remains, and it's going to be the derivative of h with respect to time, the h dt. We already know the h dt, right? Right there. So you then tell me what you get for the r dt then. And what about the units? Units for R divided by units for T. Units for R is a distance unit, right? Like meters. And time was in minutes. And does it make sense these came out negative? Yes, because the water is leaking out of this container. The radius is going to shrink and the height is going to shrink. It makes sense that they all came out to be negative. 